First up, we have um, Patrick Edgehart from the Department of uh, Interior's Office of Natural Resources uh, Revenue in Denver. He um, is the Public Affairs Officer and Spokesman, and he is going to talk to us today about the federal receipt and disbursement of oil and gas royalties, rents, and bonus payments. So, Patrick, um, thank you for joining us today. We look forward to hearing um, what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, anyway, welcome and thank you. Uh, thank you, Kirby, for the invite to make this presentation. I'll try to be quick and we'll uh, not get too much into, well, we'll go quick. Some of these slides are not real exciting, but basically the Department of Interior has been involved in the, you know, management of some of these leasing programs for federal and American Indian lands for the last 90 years. This just briefly provides shows which agencies we work closely with. We work closely with the BLM, we work closely with the BIA, we have the offshore agencies uh, such as the Ocean, well, Bureau of Ocean Energy Management and also the Office of Special Trustee because we collect, we basically collect all royalties, collect and disperse all royalties from a federal and American Indian lands onshore and from all the offshore waters. Just to show you where we are, we're in the secretary's office, uh, which is up there. And I know these org charts, I hate them anyway, but just to show you how it works. And this is our organization in Denver. We, uh, for onshore development, we definitely work closely with the BLM as a leasing agency and the land management agency. So they will issue the leases they do in charge of inspections. Uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs helps manage any of the American Indian lands, tribal lands, as well as individual Indian mineral owners. And then the Office of Special Trustee, we work with them when we make the disbursements back to the Indian lands. Now, our headquarters is in Washington, and the bulk of our operations are in, in Denver. But we also have uh, various field offices, like in Dallas and Houston, that's primarily uh, involved in the auditing function for the offshore uh, production. We do have a small field office in Farmington, Fort Berthold, which is uh, really producing quite a bit lately. Also Oklahoma City and Tulsa, there's a lot of Indian leases over there. And so again, those are primarily auditing functions on those. Now, just for, as of January, we, there's a total of 60,000 plus leases of which 34,000 are producing at the moment. And of those, you know, it's about 1,400 offshore, 26,000 onshore, and then about 6,000 Indian leases. And each lease may have multiple wells on it. The products we collect royalties on, as you can see, the oil and natural gas represent the bulk of the revenues, up to 90%. Coal's adding about 8%. This is nationwide. And then smaller amounts for these other materials, everything from geothermal to uh, sand and gravel and things like that. Uh, and I'll get into more of these as well. And, and this is, most of you probably know this, you know, at least when we grant a lease, that just basically explains that when BLM sells an onshore lease, you know, that gives a leasee the right to develop the sources. Uh, there's usually a time limit somewhat on there because we want that resource to be developed as promptly as possible, but it can take several years from when the lease is first developed to when they have to start paying the royalties when, it start, when the lease starts producing. Uh, bonuses, it's what they call the high bid when you have a lease sale. Onshore, you know, you get bonus bids and also offshore. Some uh, eh, fairly substantial money can, can result from the bonus bids. Rents, as I say, that's kind of a nominal fee that they just have to pay each year to maintain that lease. And if they don't pay the rent, 
you know, they can relinquish the lease. And then the royalties, that's when they actually start producing. And so we go with that. Now, for fiscal year 2014, we dispersed a total of 14 point, excuse me, 13.4 billion nationwide. And of that, about a little more than 7 billion went to the Treasury. 890 million went to the Land and Water Conservation Fund. That is a fund that provides matching grants to community states to, uh, for various projects. One thing I should say about this is we generally disperse about $900 million a year to that Land and Water Conservation Fund. It's administered by the National Park Service, but Congress often does not appropriate does not appropriate that full amount. They will take some of the money for other uses and stuff like that. Anyway, we also give about 150 million to the Historic Preservation Fund, about 1.7 billion to the Reclamation Fund. I'm a native of southeastern Colorado and I'm a big fan of the Reclamation Fund just for water because that funds our water, hydropower projects, things like that. We uh, Last year we gave, not gave, dispersed 2 billion, 2.2 billion to 35 states of which Colorado received about 168 million. We do not tell the states or there are no stipulations on what they do with the money. Many of the states, you know, have developed formulas on how to disperse it. I know Wyoming, they have an extensive distribution list going from higher education back back to the county that might be impacted by the production, capital funds, things like that. Uh, Wyoming actually, of all the states, gets about the most. Last year they got right about one billion dollars in their disbursements. New Mexico was second with about 500 million. Uh, and New Mexico uses it, they fund their entire state education K through 12 with uh, the disbursement money they get. And then we dispersed about 1.1 billion to 34 Indian tribes and individual Indian mineral owners. This is our, just kind of shows our cumulative disbursement since 1982 and we're topping more than a quarter of a trillion dollars. And this just shows what the, what the, uh, you know, the accumulative or the totals in that time period. Now, the way we disperse revenues, it used to be like a 50-50 split from the state. If, if production occurs on federal lands within the state borders, we basically share 49% of that revenue with the state. One exception is Alaska that you say talk about 90%, but and we got somebody doing some research on that, and it uh, relates to the reclamation fund that you, you know, would be given to all states. Anyway, and 40% of the reclamation fund, and generally, this is for onshore, 11% to the treasury. Uh, American Indian tribes and individual Indian mineral owners, we return 100% to the tribe or the mineral owner. Uh, and I know we're more interested here in the onshore, but just so you know, with the offshore revenues, and some coastal states kind of complain at times that the onshore states get a better deal, if you will. But uh, we, uh, on the coastal states, state waters generally go out about three miles. And beyond that, there's a federal zone that we share 27% of the revenues, any production in that with the states. And then out in the outer continental shelf, which goes out 200 miles from our borders, we uh, historically that went 100% to the treasury, but there has been uh, recent, there was a Gulf of Mexico Energy Security Act. I better get going through this faster, but uh, these are some of the other revenues. The other thing I want to point out, we have, uh, per the, Congress and the Balanced Budget and their Emergency Deficit Control Act of 85 uh, renewed as amended with the Budget Control Act of 2011. 
we have to withhold funds from the state disbursements, which part sequestration. This talks about some of the amounts. It's kind of uh, not an efficient use of the funds because even though I, I just want to give fair warning, I raised that too soon. You've got more time. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, with sequestration, the law requires that we withhold it from these various funds. But then the law also states that to the end of that fiscal year, we give that money back to the state or wherever the funds were sequestered, at least for the Mineral Leasing Act funds. And from our perspective, it's not efficient use of our time because we have to keep track of how much we're withholding from each state. It's supposed to be related to deficit reduction, but then we end up having to give it back. So it uh, it's kind of a goofy way to uh, do things. And there was a court case when that thing was originally uh, law was originally passed and the judge ruled you know looking at this we withhold money but then we give it back so it looks like a scam but that's the way congress wrote it so that's what we do uh this is kind of an interesting slide and it's also somewhat misleading i want to explain this in fiscal year 2013 the state total disbursement was 129 million. And companies report to us electronically and we can code where that lease is located down to the county level. And of that, it was saying 61.8 million was the result of production in Garfield County. In fiscal year 14, the state total went up and the Garfield County uh, thing was down but it looks like I had grabbed some of our reported royalty revenues because the, the companies report to us on a monthly basis when they make their royalty repayment and so we check that carefully and then we you know make the disbursements but it looks like there were some re and we were on a three-year audit and compliance cycle so that means like in 2015 we're going back and auditing what the companies report to us in 2012. And then if there's any adjustments, we can do that. But looking at some of the revenues, it looks like some of the companies sometimes make mistakes when they report. Maybe you put the decimal in the wrong place or something. And it looked like uh, <laughs> they had a big boost in uh, unprocessed wet gas in uh 2013 to tune about 48 million, but then some company came in later and pulled that back out. But so that's basically Garfield County is contributing a lot to the to the production that's occurring in this state. And in fiscal year 15, we just for the first two, three, six months, excuse me, half year, state total disbursements we disperse on a monthly basis is so far about 79.9 million of which 21.9 came from Garfield County. And so that's comparable to, comparable to last year. We do expect these disbursements to decline with the declining energy prices. I'll go through with this real quick. We, in addition to collecting and dispersing, we also have a coordination enforcement program. We also have our audit and compliance program. Uh, some of this stuff isn't real exciting, but one important point to make is we, we, we're on a risk-based audit and compliance effort where we evaluate who might be audited, things like that. But in fiscal year 2014, we looked at 70% of the payers. If you compare that to what the IRS does there, audits they may do from depending upon the size of the company one to ten percent so we try you can't we cannot audit every single company but uh we're looking at quite a bit of them we've uh instituted some other programs like data mining we're looking for errors earlier we're uh companies also have to report production to us which we use to compare with their royalty reports so we can you know, see how everything looks reasonable. We do rely on certain states and tribes that have substantial 
energy development. Uh, we basically contract with the states and the tribes, provide them funds for their auditors and have them do some of our audits and things in their state because we think the states are very interested in making sure we collect the right amount of money. And so this has been a, a good program in that regard. Uh, one of the, just a little bit, that's not real interesting, but when companies wire us their payments, that basically goes straight to the treasury. We have to, and the way it works, a company is report, required to report to us uh, by the end of the month following the month of production. They have to report what they did with it and uh, make their royalty payment. We, in turn, then have to tie that payment to a particular lease or account and make that disbursement by the, by the end of the following month. So the reported re revenues never match the disbursements, partly because there's a one-month lag. Also, the companies, you know, when they report with that first initial deadline, they can go in and change their reports as they get better information and stuff like that. But this, is, this just kind of shows what we're trying to do electronically. We're trying to get everybody to uh, report electronically and pay. You have some small mom and pop operations that still write checks and stuff. But we have our computing systems where we look to see if the data looks reasonable or the price is right because we collect royalties based on what they sell and how that works. Uh, unbundling of uh, transportation and processing costs. The uh, group that left to go visit that gas plant this morning, this is somewhat pertinent. We're not looking at them at this point, but a lot of, a lot of the gas producers anymore, you know, they're sending their product to a gas processing plant, which removes the impurities, may do some boosting, things like that. Uh, unfortunately, not all those deductions are allowable. I mean, companies are allowed certain deductions, but what happens with the gas processing plants is the plant gives a producer one bill for everything. And then they try to deduct all the costs. And so we're going through to the various processing plants. We've been concentrating on, on New Mexico first and uh, breaking out what are the allowable and unallowable costs, which will help the companies report to us more accurately. And uh, so anyway, that's one of the things going on. This is something else that you might not really be interested in here, but the United States has joined this global Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, which currently has 48 countries participating. U.S. is participating, not because we're worried about the transparency, because this country is very transparent, as, and particularly with the energy industry, but globally, there are some places where companies will pay the leaders of the country, and that money may not always get down to the area that was impacted. And so we've joined this area effort and industry has joined with us where basically industry will report in the U.S. how much they paid to the government, state and federal, well, federal at least initially, will report how much they received. Uh, independent uh, administrator will reconcile the numbers and these will all be published. And so this is a uh, just getting started and the first report's going to come out at the end of this year. And with that said, that is a, kind of a quick presentation, but are there any questions or anything? I know I went through it kind of quick. <laughs>